Do you ever feel that YouTube guides aren't in-depth enough? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a solution for you, and it is GameLeap. GameLeap is an educational video platform that helps you get the most out of Dota. Each hero is cleverly devised into special courses with lots of videos, which help you master all the finer points of how to play a player really well. And it's done by 7K plus MMR players. And don't forget, if you sign up for GameLeap, not only does it help you win more and get your MMR up, it also supports my channel. Hey guys, this is Brink. This is going to be the mid lane video on laning and rune control. Laning and rune control is a very, very key aspect of mid lane that you definitely need to have a good grasp on. So hopefully watching this video is going to get you a better idea about how you should approach the lane and how you should approach rune control on different types of heroes. So the first thing about your lane control when you're playing the mid lane is the initial creep block in equilibrium. So when you go into your matches and you pick up your banner in at the start of the game and you rush to your lane, you want to try to get that block as best as possible to land on your hill. If you get this block, you can manage to have your creep equilibrium on your hill, which will give you a bunch of different advantages. One being you're a lot safer from incoming support rotations or any ganks in general, and you also have the advantage of not having uphill miss. So if you're trading with your enemy early on, sometimes this happens, rather than focusing on CS, there's a lot of trades between heroes depending on their builds, depending on the hero matchup. Having the uphill advantage in this scenario will give you an advantage because the 25% miss chance of the enemy hero should come into play 25% of the time. So it, your trades should be more beneficial for you. When you're blocking your initial wave going into the mid lane, you sometimes want to try to get the range creep to go in front. This depends on what you want to do pressure wise in your mid lane. So when it comes to some heroes like Templar Assassin, you don't mind pushing that wave. Pushing the wave with Templar Assassin and using side blades to harass under the enemy tower and things are very, very helpful to you as long as you do it in a safe position, safe scenario where you know where the enemy heroes are and you know you're not going to get rotated on under their tower or anything. Other heroes, if it's a hard lane and you want to stay back, you really want to try to get that range creep in front. So when you're blocking, try to manipulate the wave by blocking certain creeps and not the range creep, trying to get the range creep to run forward and die first. Doing this will allow the range creep to die a lot faster, obviously, and less damage will be output onto the enemy mid creeps once your range creep is dead. This will surely make your wave die faster than the enemies, and in doing so, the lane will push towards your tower. So this scenario is really, really good for heroes that have bad lane matchups. When you're doing this, you're going to be farming on your tower a lot more, but it's better to be farming on your tower than farming at an unsafe distance from your tower against something like a Viper. So when you're playing against heroes like Viper, Queen of Pain in bad matchups, you do want to stay as close to your high ground as possible so you don't get you know blinked on or just ran down by a Viper or anything like that. So Killing this range creep of yours a lot faster and allowing the wave to push towards your tower and having the creepy clear room close to your tower is very, very beneficial for a lot of mid heroes in these hard lanes. When you end up in this first initial wave, it is very, very important to get the range creep experience and attempt to deny the experience from your enemy from your own range creep. First range creep actually matters a lot because it usually sets the tone for the lane for the first person to level up or not. So if you end up denying your range creep and you do get the last hit on the enemy range creep or you just secure the experience at all, then you're probably going to be hitting level 2 and if the lane goes well after that first range creep, you should be hitting level 3 before the enemy. Level 3 is a very big power spike for a lot of the mid heroes, so you really want to focus on getting these range creeps in lane. These are the most important aspects of the mid lane right now since the experience was changed and the range creeps give a lot more. You definitely want to be using abilities, whether you're Dragonite using Fire Breath in combination with an auto attack or Shadow Fiend with a raise. You definitely want to be securing these range creep blast hits and trying to deny them from your enemy. These are the most pivotal point of the mid lane right now in the early levels. You and yours will not prevail. As your laning stage progresses, you're going to be noticing a lot of times where, you know, people are pulling the creep equilibrium, 
either way and sometimes creeps end up going in both directions and not attack each other so you might have two melee creeps of your own going up onto the enemy hill attacking the enemy hero and you might have two enemy creeps attacking you in these kind of scenarios where you're tanking creeps you don't always want to just pull them straight in the tower you can take a little bit of damage and use your regen just a little bit trying to manipulate the creep equilibrium of the next wave that's incoming so if you tank creeps for a little bit on top of your hill and your enemy pulls them into the into his tower range when your next creep wave comes up and meets these couple creeps that you have lingering here then your equilibrium is going to be 100 percent on your hill as your creeps are dying under his tower a lot faster than his creeps are dying to your new wave here so in this kind of position it gives you that advantage that you had at the first wave again you have that uphill advantage and you're a lot safer playing closer to your tower when it comes to thinking about incoming ganks. Your enemy is also positioned in the river a lot of the time in this scenario, unless he starts pulling the wave over and over, and this makes him more susceptible to you doing an aggressive play on something like a Queen of Pain or a Puck, or just having rotations coming in on the enemy mid hero as well. He's in a lot more scary of a position than you are. As for this creep aggro thing I was talking about earlier, with you know the enemy hero was pulling the lane to try to get them out of the river. This is a very, very fundamental part of the mid lane as well. You really want to be able to manipulate the creep wave to benefit you as much as possible. So if you're in you know, a bad lane position, if you're sitting in the river and you don't have wards or something, you really don't want to be in the river if you don't have to be. So always try to get your high ground. If the creep equilibrium ends up on the enemy high ground, you really do want to pull it back unless you're the aggressor in the lane. If you're having a hard lane, you definitely want those creeps to be pulled back. So, in doing so, you have to be within 500 range of the enemy creeps, melee or ranged. And if you issue an attack command on any enemy hero, then the creeps will aggro onto you and you'll be able to pull them a little bit. They'll ignore your own creeps. This is only within the two second window that when you initially enter the 500 range, there's a two second window. So if you attack from outside of the window onto an enemy hero, the creeps actually won't aggro you until you've been within the 500 range of them for two seconds. So being within this 500 range and aggroing the enemy creeps, you're going to be able to manipulate the wave to pull you know, their melee creeps onto your range creep or just their creeps away from the enemy hill in general. Anything that makes your lane easier. If you do manage to pull them onto your range creep and they kill it, that's great. If their range creep is still alive, then it's definitely going to be pushing towards your favor. If not, you're probably going to end up in that situation where you pull all their creeps and they pull all your creeps, and you have to try to reset the lane equilibrium by tanking a few creeps on your high ground. Either way, this is beneficial for the losing lane matchup because you still get farm and they don't apply as much pressure onto you as they should be. Also, a good thing to remember in messing with the creep equilibrium in this fashion is to not you know, continuously pull the creeps. When you pull the enemy creeps, something happens that a lot of people don't notice is that the enemy creeps are following you, trying to attack you while your creeps are attacking their creeps. So your waves are going to be putting more damage onto the enemy waves than vice versa, and therefore you might end up actually pushing your lane and making the lane harder for yourself if you're pulling these creeps too much and not pulling them into the right position. So you definitely want to manage these creeps well and you want to try to get the specific location of the enemy creeps where you want them. So getting them on top of your range creep for instance or just continuously pulling them back to your hill. That should wrap up most of the lane in control. If there's any questions about that definitely put it below. And we're going to go right into rune control here. As for rune control in the mid lane, there are different aspects of heroes that you have to consider. So some heroes have very very good mobility such as Queen of Pain with her blink or Puck with his orb. Different things like this make it easier for some heroes to get to runes than others. Also, heroes like Queen of Pain and Puck, for instance, have great abilities for pushing out the lane. When you push out the lane, you secure the farm in the lane for yourself, as well as you can make the enemy have to decide what they want. So if you push out a lane and the enemy mid-hero goes for the rune early, you're making them decide between the experience and farm from the lane or the rune that they just have a chance of getting. After the patch 7.0, there's only a 50% chance of a rune spawning in the river, actually. So if they guess wrong and they sacrifice the farming experience, they're going to get really far behind. So pushing out this lane is very, very pivotal in making your mid lane successful when you're on a rune-focused hero like Queen of Pain or Puck. 
heroes like invoker are very very you know fine without a bottle in lane and they are very lane focused they don't need runes to do much in the lane they've got their skill set even like od doesn't really really need runes too much but if you're going a bottle build on od you probably want to get the most of the bottle and find some opportunities with runes so when you're thinking of it in the core aspect heroes that don't need bottles shouldn't really worry as much about runes heroes like sniper invoker things like that but heroes that are very very bottle focused you know like priestess of the moon qua puck anything with a bottle templar assassin these heroes that can push their capabilities with a rune a lot more yeah you're going to be wanting to be rune focused on these heroes so trying to push up the wave prior to the rune spawn and then getting to the rune in time is a very very key aspect of the mid lane for these bottle heroes I remember Dota's not just a solo game, it's not a 1v1 in the mid lane. The game's still a 5v5, you just have a solo lane. So you can ask for help from your off laner or your supports to try to help secure a rune if you're having trouble in your mid lane. Or if you see it's just an open opportunity, you don't really have to bother them too much, but it's still really good to get help when you need it, as you can actually get these supports in off lane even more farm by doing that if you do get a kill at the rune or something like that. Also. Not to be forgotten are the bounty rune spawns. The four bounty spawns are very, very beneficial to mid laners. Bottle heroes have a, a lot more impact in the game as there's more runes to pick up. So if you don't get, you know, the double damage bot or whatever it is that spawns anywhere, then you can always back up into your jungle and grab a bounty rune if you really, really need that little extra bit of bottle in the situation or anything. The shrines are still really helpful for these heroes, but not using the shrine when you don't have to is beneficial for your team because it's not only your shrine you have to remember it's a team game there's going to be many scenarios where if you have a shrine up and you don't have to use it as a single mid hero then it's going to benefit your team a lot more that's about it for rune control in the mid lane if you have any questions like i said before you know post a comment i'll try to get to it if you have any suggestions anything that i missed throw it down there as well thanks for watching